This is the largest piece of open space in New York City. If you take in the whole Jamaica Bay, it's about 13,000 acres of open water, marshland, upland, shorelines. The bay is an important nursery ground for lots of species of fish. It's a great uh, feeding and wintering and breeding habitat for many species of birds. Jamaica Bay is being called the greatest urban park, but it's the, probably the only park that has a four-lane highway, a subway, and an airport in it. So that's kind of incredible. The tides are getting higher. So little by little, uh, the high tides are higher than normal, you know, that they were 30 years ago. Almost six inches more of height of water in the 30 years I've been here, which is substantial. We know sea level rise is happening. We're experiencing it on a very grassroots level, literally. The marshes are disappearing at a rate of 30 to 40 acres a year. If these marshes die, Jamaica Bay is really, really at risk. Not only are the marshes vital for the wildlife and the marine life, but they also protect coastal communities. About six feet. So the water level, which just uh, devastated everything, I, I didn't put things up high enough. The Superstorm Sandy actually was a wake up to a lot of people who thought that, you know, maybe it's not going to impact us, as we, we live a little bit inland, but they found out after the storm that we're all susceptible to this. This community was very, very hard hit. The entire island flooded, all of the Rockaways flooded. So now we need to deal with the reality of what it means to live and work near Jamaica Bay or the Atlantic, and especially with such an urban populated city. It's, it's a real problem. And the warming of the oceans, uh, perhaps uh, more intense storms coming our way. Uh, so 30, 40, 50 years down the line, many of the people that are living here are either gonna have to move their houses up 10 feet or leave. Climate change is a fact. And I think that you know what we're looking here on the island is what could we do in our small part of the world to, uh, to be better prepared for the next generation. Um, of, of uh, residents who are going to be living here. Um, right here is a house that is being raised. You know, we'll rather take uh, the option of adapting to it and, and trying to build smarter as opposed to just the give up and run away uh, approach. So um, they're going to take these streets, they're going to rip them up, <coughs> they're going to bring in fill, they're going to raise them 36 inches, which is a, a significant lift of a street bed. We have to look at all the options. And um, in this town here, we're seeing the individuals take on some of that responsibility. Today we had a whole group of 150 young people coming out. So it's, it energizes me to get people out there and, and be positive and, uh, and try to clean up the marine debris around the bay. We started uh, cleaning up the shorelines in 1986. as part of International Coastal Cleanup Day. And every year it's been growing and growing and more and more people are coming out of the woodwork. And this year we've had so many groups, you know, corporate groups, school groups, scout groups, religious groups. Everybody seems to want to come out and do something, you know, and cleaning a shoreline is, is kind of uh, something visible you can do. You know, you can, you see it, you remove it, it looks nice. This is when the tide is coming in. Uh, volunteers. I'm heavily, heavily involved in the marsh restoration, and that was a project we started two years ago. It's the first volunteer community-led marsh restoration in a national park ever. And so this project is to serve as a model for marsh restoration going forward. The reason why we are rebuilding marshes is the marshes protect the mainland. So the marshes will, will attenuate any wave action, any storm action. Um, the more marshland we have out there, the safer that people living on the shorelines will be. The more marshland we have, the more habitat for wildlife. I think it's one of the most important projects we've ever worked on. It was certainly, when they told us about it, I just sort of felt the pit of my stomach drop because I knew how massive it was going to take, the planning it was going to take, and the concerted effort. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, when you look across and you see 30 acres replanted, of marsh and in the background is the skyline of New York City. Um, it's incredibly rewarding and it's important. It's just a great place to be here. You know, I love the city for all its, for all its cultural aspects. And here I have 
the best of both worlds. I have nature and I have the city.